are ready for a new year. Now, y'all are Revolution. Dead. Well, let's try it again, just for me, just for kicks, because I have to stand up here and talk for the next 25 minutes. So how many of you are ready for a new year? Thank you. You seem excited. I know it's cold outside. You know what? Believe it or not, I can't personally believe that we are on December 31st. Like, it all just is a blur. But regardless, it's here. And tomorrow, we start a brand new year. And all of us, as we have to write 2018, I'm sure we're going to be marking through it over and over because we've messed it up. But you know, the cool thing is a seven can be turned to an eight really really easily. So unlike some of those years, you couldn't get away with it. This year, you'll be able to. (laughs) Well, today, as we um, are closing out this year, we are excited to bring you a message that we believe is going to challenge you to help you as you come into your new year. You see, every year you do a couple things as you approach that new year. You do this. You look back and you reflect on what has happened this past year. You then evaluate those things that happened and then you plan for your new year. Now, for some of you, you look back and there might have been some good moments There might have been some really bad moments. Things you look at and you say, you know, if I could just watch a video of my life this year, what would I be really proud of? What would I want to tweak a little bit? What would I want to change? And what would I want to just delete? You know, do you ever have those moments you wish there was just a delete button in your life? Like, delete that out. I wish I'd never said it. I wish I'd never done it. I wish I'd never gone through it. I want to just delete it. Well, we know that obviously in our life, we cannot go back into 2017. All we have is where we are moving forward. But what we can do is we can look back and we can reflect upon the things that God did in our life and we can evaluate the things that we know we need to improve on as we move into a new year. You see, God's plan for your life and for mine, for every individual, for every family, for every business, organization, every church, is to grow. God doesn't want you to be the same person tomorrow that you are today. He wants you to always be working towards getting a little bit better, becoming a little bit more like him, doing something that causes you to grow. Well, today we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about it in your life. We're going to talk about it with this church. We're going to do three things. We're going to reflect, we're going to evaluate, and we're going to plan for a new year. Yes. All right. Matthew 16, we're going to get right into God's word because God's word brings change to our lives because it is living, it is active, and it is powerful. All right. How many of you guys need some power in your life? Yes. Get into God's word and that's what we're about to do. So get ready, get ready, get ready. All right. Matthew 16, verse 13. We're going to start here. It says, when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? Great question, all right? They replied with this. Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets, all right? Here's what Jesus says. But what about you? Who do you say that I am? Have you ever heard a loaded question? Have you ever heard your boss ask you a question that you really didn't want to answer because you knew that it was loaded? Maybe... Maybe your parents, if you're younger, asked you a question. Maybe your wife. May- <laughs> when she's getting dressed, like, how do oh, I look? Oh, is that a loaded in question or what, man? Outfit. Does this make me look fat? <laughs> Does this dress make me look fat? It's not how she sounds, but, you know, I just had to add a It's a voice. loaded question. You better think it's, before you boys, answer it. Boys, I'm just telling you, take your time with that one. Say, can I answer after the next time we fast and pray? Because I need to really give this some prayerful thought. As to how I'm going to answer this. No, baby, you look so good. Don't lie. Don't go to hell over a dress. Be honest. But she appreciates the honesty. She doesn't look fat. She looks beautiful. She looks beautiful. All right. Where are we at? Are we preaching something? All I'm thinking about is her getting dressed. And now I can't even think about the message. Because, wow. Loaded questions. All right? Loaded question. Like, like, uh, I could ask one of my sons, all right, that have been using my truck, maybe just around the place there, I can say, why is my truck on empty? That's a loaded question, right? Uh, Why is there a new dent in the bumper of my truck? That's a good question, but it's loaded. It's loaded in that whatever you answer, the, the result is I'm going to kill you because I know that you are responsible for what has happened here. So the question is loaded. 
And Jesus asks his disciples this question that is loaded. Who do you say I am? Man, talk about pressure. The pressure is on. Who do you say that I am? So here we have Simon Peter. This guy is always letting his rear end overload his mouth. He's always saying the wrong thing at the wrong time. He never nails it. But for some reason this day, Peter knocks it out of the park. He gives an answer that just is spot on. He says this, you are the Messiah. You are the son of the living God. When he realized that not only Peter knew this, but the rest of the disciples knew this as well, he ordered all of them to tell no one that he was the Messiah. Because remember, if you were here during our Christmas series or you were here during our Easter series, we, t- we talk a lot about how the disciples and really the, the Jewish people, they were expecting the Messiah to come in a different way. They were expecting him to come and kick tail and take names and and take over the tyranny of the Roman Empire. And Jesus, it was starting to pan out to where Jesus, he's not doing this, right? He's, He's not taking over like we thought he would. So look what happens. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. They're thinking, this is not in the plans, all right? We know you're Messiah, but this is not part of the plan. It's kind of taking them back. It's freaking them out because they're like, we're we not seeing how this is going to end up being a good thing if you're going to die, all right? We don't know how you're going to take over. So he says, I have to be killed, and I'm going to be raised on the third day and brought back to life. Peter took him aside. Here we go with Peter going back to the 99% of the time where he says the wrong thing at the wrong time. Peter goes on then to rebuke the Lord. And he says, never, Lord. I can almost imagine him just taking him by the arms and shaking him and saying, never, Lord. This shall never happen to you. Jesus turned aside to Peter, and he said, listen, who's he talking to? Peter. But this is what he says. He says, get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. Listen to this. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. I believe there's two opposing forces that are always going to get in the way of what God has for us and who he wants us to be. I believe Satan himself is sometimes standing right in front of us. You see, Jesus was pursuing his purpose. He came to die so that we could have life. He came with a purpose in mind. And, 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 and Satan was using Peter to stand right in front of Christ and try to keep him from doing what God had purposed within him to do. So a lot of times Satan is standing right in front of you, keeping you from doing what God's called you to do and being who God has called you to be. And then sometimes there's people that are in our midst. They might be coworkers. They might be family. They might be neighbors. They're naysayers. You believe God has birthed something in your heart. You believe God has told you something to do. You believe that God has given you a focus for your life. I really want to become this in the Lord. I want to become this type of person. When I look in the mirror, this is who I want to see. But then you have people that are like, what are you doing? Why, why, are, you, why are you doing this? Like, like the, the old you, you weren't going to church every Sunday. Hey, going to church is cool, but do you have to go every Sunday? And what is this whole life group thing? What is this all about? Is this a cult? Like you guys sit in circles? You sing Kumbaya? What's your problem, man? Come on, you're not the same as you used to be. Like you ain't much fun since you stopped drinking. You know that one? Right? Right? People start giving us a hard time. And these people are getting in the way of who God wants us to be. Some of you guys, you've come through these doors and your life has been turned upside down. And then all of a sudden your friends start whispering these things in your ears like, what are you, what are you doing? Like, what's this all about? Because I don't really like the new you because it makes me feel bad about who I am, right? Sometimes it's not Satan and it's not people around you. It's Satan working through people. It's both. Standing right in front of you, keeping you from your purpose. You know, this, this church is called Mountain Movers Church for a reason. A mountain is anything, say anything, anything that stands as an obstruction, Keeping you from your purpose in him. What's your purpose? To know him and to make him known. That's why you're here on this planet. 
anything that stands in the way, Satan or a person or anybody, anything else that stands in the way, a mountain that stands in your path, it's got to go. It doesn't belong there. And if you read that passage uh, in, in Mark, right before Jesus speaks to the mountain and commands it to be lifted and cast aside, he curses a fig tree and commands it to wither up and die in front of his disciples, and they're amazed, right? He said, if this amazes you, you're going to speak to mountains and command they be lifted. And he was speaking figuratively, but he said, I'm able, but I'm going to work through you to do things that are just going to absolutely blow your mind if you'll just give me a chance in your life. But he cursed the fig tree. Why? Because it wasn't bearing any fruit. And a tree that doesn't bear fruit has no purpose other than it just looks good doesn't have any purpose. There's things in your life that need to go before 2018 because they are hindering you. They are an obstruction from your purpose. I remember we were in Branson in college. Misty was student body president. I was freshman uh, class president, and we had coordinated this, uh, this spring banquet event where the whole college, all right, professors, students, everybody, student body, all headed down to Branson, and we had this big event. It was awesome. We had a great, great time together over spring break. And one of the things that we did is we went out and, and we, uh, we went on the go-karts out on the strip in, in Branson. We were having so much fun, and, and we were having a blast. I remember we were out there. We were heat, in the heat of the race, man. And I, I realized in the middle of the race that this guy I've been trying to whip the whole time is Professor Engel. One of my professors, all right? And I'm like, this, I have got to lose this guy because he is right at me just the whole time. I'm like, I'm, I'm ahead, and then he pulls ahead, and then I'm ahead, he pulls ahead. By the end of the race, we cross the finish line, and he pulls right past me. Right before we cross the I was furious. I was like, there's no way I'm going to let this old goat beat me. <laughs> and he beat me. And we pull up in the line, all right? I'm just sitting here just looking at the steering wheel, just gripping it. I'm just, I, I'm so mad. And he gets up, and I hear, Brad Helton. And I look up. When, when your professor yells your name with, with boldness like that, you just look up. And he said, Brad Helton, eat my dust, man. <laughs> I was like, oh. When you think about this passage where Jesus is speaking to Peter, he says, Satan, get behind me. Why do you think Jesus said that? When, you, when he stands in front of us, when people stand in front of us that get in the way of us becoming who God wants us to be and doing what God wants us to do, they need to be moved. Not from just being in front of you, but they need to be moved behind you. And this life is a race. Philippians 3, verse 13 says, says No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, But I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward. Say forward. Forward. To what lies ahead, the things that God has for you. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. When is the last time you looked the devil in the eyes and you said, devil? Eat my dust. I think that it's time that some of us believers rise up. And you quit acting in this attitude of like, I'm a victim. I'm, woe is me. Look at what's happened to me. It's not fair, these circumstances that I've had to endure. Listen to me. Shake it off, man. Look the devil in the eyes and say, devil, eat my dust. Get behind me. You don't belong between me and the purpose that God has for my life. His plans are good. His plans are good. He has a hope for me and a future. That's right. You know, the scripture in the middle, it says, forgetting the past and I look forward to what lies ahead. As we look back, before we forget it, what we want to do is we want to look back and we want to evaluate, what do I want to be different this coming year? It's not just enough to say, forget it. You need to learn from it, all right? Because if you don't learn from your past, you are doomed to what? Repeat it, 
All right? So you got to look back and you got to say, God, thank you. There's some good things that happen. There has to be some good things that happen. You got to open your eyes and see them. You're still living. You're still breathing. There's good things that happen to you. But listen, you got to look back and say, what is it I want to do different in 2018 to see my purpose fulfilled for what God has called me to do? I want to walk it out a little bit more. You got to evaluate it. All right? So when you do, you say, what am I proud of? And what am I going to change? What am I going to do different this year? Well, as a church, we do the exact same thing. In the month of December, Brad and I have spent the entire month looking at what have we done well at Mountain Movers Church in 2017? What are we proud of? And what do we need to do different in 2018 to continue to grow as a church, to continue to reach out to our community and see lives changed? Well, we want to remind you, some of you that have been with us the whole time, and some of you, maybe this is your first time, we're going to give you just a little reflection of 2017 here at MMC. Mountain Movers Church to me is family. It's family. Love. Friendships. Life changed. Home. At this church, we're just all about loving people. We're just about being real. It's about relationships. It's not about religion. I believe we all have something that God has called us to do. We make uh, this thing called Christianity the way too complicated. It's very simple. It it's about loving God. Our mission at Mountain Movers Church is to lead people into a real and a life-changing relationship with Jesus that's contagious. In 365 days, we have seen God do a lot. We saw in Easter, this church went to three life-changing experiences in Easter. We built a rec yard for our students and our kids' ministry, which you saw pictures in the beginning. And towards the end, you saw them out there experiencing, connecting, loving, being on that rec yard. This year, our life group ministry grew 100%. You can give God a hand. 100%. 
Our live group director is Brandy and Brandon Keith. They do a phenomenal job, but we ran out of space. I mean, we opened up homes, but we flat ran out of room. We built two new portable buildings. We brought them in and like slammed them in there. This year, it was awesome. We also, in this year, we ran out of nursery space. The nursery just began to blow up as marriages just got better and better. Well, our nursery got bigger and bigger, and we had to expand. Anybody so catch the, that? <laughs> they're like, what? So our student ministry, we remodeled the student wing. We expanded the nursery, getting ready for the growth. And this year, for the first time in 10 years, we hired student pastors, Jake and Lisa Hardesty. They started with us. Give them a hand. About six weeks ago, maybe a little bit longer, and we're seeing Accelerate beginning to grow and flourish. God has done so many awesome things in 17. As we have looked back, It's not all good. There's some things that we look at that we say, you know what? We can do better. We can do so much better. There's areas that this church can do better. So there's three things that we want to share with you because you are the church. We are the pastors. We're privileged to be your pastors, but you, the people, are the church. It's not this building. It's not our facility or our campus. You and I, we are the church. So this year, there's three things God has laid heavy on our heart that we need to focus on, and one of them is an area that when we evaluated, we really need to improve. The first one is this. It's assimilation. What do I mean when I say assimilation? Well, every week here at Mountain Movers, we are blessed and we are privileged to have new people come through the doors. Newcomers come in. You guys take those invites off your seats and you take them out into our world and you invite your friends and your families and people you don't even know. And they come through our doors every week. Well, we're not just a place where we want to see people come in one door and leave out the other. We want to assimilate them into the family of God, into not only this church, but bigger, the body of Christ. Well, this year we saw over 1,000 newcomers come through the doors of Mountain Movers Church. 1,000! In Turkey, Ford, Oklahoma, it's not, I mean, like we're out in the middle of nowhere, and God has brought all of these people to us. Well, you know what's amazing is we have found out this last week by one of our mentors that mega churches that are 2,500 or more, if they assimilate 3% a year of the newcomers that come through their doors, that is what they are going for, 3%, all right? That is what's expected. That's their normal growth. Well, 3% is, doesn't seem like a lot, right? Well, I want to tell you that at Mountain Movers, we assimilated 10% of those 1,000 into the family of God. So this church, this church grew 100 people. But to Brad and I, as your pastors, that didn't seem like a great thing. We were like, but there's 900, 900 that came out and have been a part of an event or a service, and we didn't assimilate them. And so our number one focus in 2018 is assimilating newcomers into the body of Christ, helping them to become a part of the family. Some of you guys over Christmas, you went home to family, right? Some of you, you walk in and it's like, you go straight to the fridge, you know where everything's at. It's like, this is home, right? Others of you might have gone home and maybe it's not like that. And you're kind of tiptoeing around because it's kind of a little bit awkward. That's not what we want around here. We want to assimilate people to where they know where the fridge is. You know what I'm saying? There's not much in this one here. But I'm saying to where you walk in and you feel like family. That's our focus in 18. Well, I want to tell you that in order to do that, there's some things that have to change. You can't continue to do the same thing and expect a different result. Not as an organization, not as a church, not as an individual. If I continue to eat the same way, I will continue to look like I do, right? If I want to be healthy, if I want to be able to run 10 miles, I better get out there and start running a few right now. So you have to do something different. And there's a universal principle, and it's called this. The principle of growth, it goes like this. Change, conflict, growth. If you want to see growth, there's going to be change, There's going to be some conflict. There's going to be like, is this going to work? I don't know. I've got some fear. Maybe there's conflict with people. But if you execute it well, you see growth. So in 17, I showed you all the things we changed. We moved people around. We shifted buildings. We shifted people. Man, we made a lot of changes. And because of it, we saw what? Growth. In 18, it's going to be no different. We're going to see growth, but there's going to be some changes. One of the biggest we want you to know about affects you. And it's really not that big of a deal, but we want you to have a heads up. In order to assimilate people, we need to know who people are. 
We need to know who comes into this room each week and each service so that we can reach out and we can make connections. All right? We've got an awesome team that over the years has taken attendance at this church week in and week out. There's a few girls that they know every one of you and they know you by name. Every one of you. And it's it blows spooky. It's my mind. It's spooky. It, it is spooky. It's spooky. It's kind of scary. And but they the stalk you stars. on Facebook because yes. Facebook helps us. If we don't know <laughs> your name, you know what I'm saying? But listen, that, that system isn't going to work in 2018. It can't work anymore. It can't work anymore. We're, we're at the point of growth. There's yep. too many people coming in too many doors. We can't, we can't do it anymore. So what we're going to do is every Sunday there will be a card on your seat. And on that card will give you the opportunity to tell us, I'm here. I want to be accounted for. And at the same time, it will give you the opportunity to share a prayer request or a need you have in your life or your family. One of the things as this church has grown that we have been able to um, not do as well is know what's going on in your life with prayer. If you're in a life group, you get the opportunity every week to say, hey, I've got a need, and your group prays with you. But if you haven't made a life group a part of your life yet, you may come in and you may, you may have a really a big thing going on in your life and none of us even know about it. So our staff is going to be praying every week over every one of those cards. But by doing that, those who, if you didn't show up one week, we want to reach out to you. We want to know what's going on in your life because we truly want you to be a part of the family. You know, every Sunday, I'm privileged to have a mom and a dad who've all been together for like bazillions of years. Yeah, I'm a horrible daughter. I don't yeah. even know. It's probably pushing 50 and I probably have a party to plan. I'm not even sure. I need to find out. I think it's next year, but every Sunday, my mom and dad, they have five children. Every Sunday they cook lunch for all of us. There's like five and all of our spouses and all of our kids. And it's like Christmas every week. And if they don't cook, we starve on Sunday after we do services. Yeah. But you know, it's a rough Sunday when they don't cook. We are, we're family. We are family. We laugh, we cry, we do life together. That's what we want to do. If I don't show up today and I don't call, you better believe somebody's going to call or text me and say, why weren't you at mom's for lunch? What's going on? That's what we want to do in this church. We want people to know that when you're gone, we truly know you're gone. We love you and we miss you. We want to know what's going on in your life. We want to assimilate Higher percentage well, this that. year. I, years ago, I heard this pastor tell this story. It wasn't him, but it was a pastor he knew of, I'm sure. That's what a lot of people say. Um, but so there was, this, there was this guy that had attended church for quite some time, and then all of a sudden, a few months go by, and he doesn't see the guy at church anymore. And one day, he's at the grocery store, and he runs into the guy. And the guy says, uh, he says to him, hey, I haven't seen you in months at church. How are you? How's it going? He said, well, I'm okay. He said, I'm, you know. He said, I'll be honest with you, Pastor. He said, you know, before I started going back to church, before I really gave my life to God, man, I, I would frequent uh, the bars on Friday, Saturday nights. Man, I would party it up, stay up all night drinking and just having, having a time with my friends. And any time I wouldn't show up to go out to the clubs or whatever with my friends, I would always get a phone call. And they'd say, hey, man, we missed you. Where were you? Man, we had so much fun last night, and, and we, we, just, we were hoping to see you, and we didn't see you there. He said, Pastor, my friends always called me to go drinking or even to, to do drugs or the things that we did together. And he said, I know those things are, are, are wrong, and they were taking me down a bad path, but they called me because they cared. He said, I've been gone for months, and nobody's called me. Nobody's written me a card. Nobody's so much has done anything to show that they missed me. And, and, and I've, I, I've never forgot that story because I've always, and I was probably like maybe 23, 24 when I heard that story. And I, I thought even then, Lord, don't ever let me be a part of a church that, that misses people like that, that, that doesn't let them know how much we really, really, really love them. And that's a challenge as the church grows. It's really, really increasingly difficult to keep that accountability and that connectivity with people to make sure that they know how much they're loved. But it is a value of ours. It has been for years that we will do everything. We will spare no expense to do everything we can to make sure that nobody slips through the cracks. So assimilation is really important to us. The next thing that we're going to really focus on this year is growth. We've seen tremendous growth this year, 
But we want to see more growth, right? Because that's why we're here. Our mission is to lead people into a real and life-changing relationship with Jesus that's contagious. That will never change. If Misty and I uh, are pastoring 25 years from now here, it'll still be our mission to win people, to set them on fire for God, that people around them would want to come around and watch them burn because they're on fire for God. That is why we exist as a church that will never change. Our mission will never, ever change. We are going to grow this year. And growth is all about positioning, not only as a church, but for you as an individual, for your family. It's all about timing, and it's all about right positioning, okay? Okay, with God. And for us as a church, we've never been in a better position to grow. The timing has never been better than it is right now. Guys, we have a rock star lineup of incredible pastors at this church. We've got Willie and Courtney Bard that are our kids' pastors. Give it up for them. They do an amazing job. Uh, we've got Jacob and Lisa Hardesty, our new student pastors. Just brought them on board. And we've got Brandy and Brandon Keith, and they're leading our life group ministry, and they are discipling people like crazy through life groups on Wednesday nights. And I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you, this team is on fire to see people's lives changed, to see mountains moved out of people's lives, and to see people make heaven their home. They are so chomping at the bit, ready to win souls this next year, but they can't do it alone. They're excited to link arms with you. They're excited to wrap up with you, link arms, and say, let's win this region for Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, we've been in meetings with these guys, and they are ramping up to see an exciting year take place. One of the focuses that we're going to have in the kids' ministry and student ministry is we're going to start a bus ministry this year. It's going to happen. That means more students... More students that that their parents normally would not bring them to church, we're going to go out and we're going to get them, and we're going to bring them here on Wednesday nights. So Wednesday nights are going to be crazy, but that's exciting, and and so it's going to take time, right? It is a journey. It's a process, but we are excited because we're going to reach more students than ever, and of course, Brandy and Brandon Keith are doing a killer job with life groups, and we're going to see more and more life group leaders and more groups launched, I believe, this year than we ever have in times past. I really, really believe it. So you might be asking yourself, how on earth are you guys going to do this? Because like right now, uh, like are we going to four services? Not right now. (laughs) Somebody corrected me last time I said that. I, I wasn't saying we will never go to four services. I'm saying not right now. God hasn't said that. But for right now, we believe it or not, there's actually room. We can do a little more shifting around of zones, and we can actually make room for 200 more people. I know you may not believe it by what you see, but I'm telling you, it can happen. If you were here in September at our 10-year anniversary, uh, you kind of heard the plan. There's some things that we can do. And now we're in the process of building, okay? That's going to happen, but it's going to happen in God's timing, which is going to actually be our third focus for 2018. We are believing, we are trusting that God is going to allow us to break ground sooner than later, all right? Are you excited because I'm excited. But something we need to understand is it takes time. It is a journey. It's a process that we we have to wrap this around our heads. We got to get it in our head. It is a process. There's lots of T's to cross. There's lots of I's to dot to make this happen. And so this year, you're going to be hearing more information as the the months, uh, the coming months, as we roll out, you're going to hear information. We're going to keep you posted on things that are happening, Uh, but it's going to happen. All right. We're going to put our focus on that. We're going to make more room for it all. But, But something we all need to really, really deep in our hearts, not just as a church, but as an individual, is that this next year, 2018, all right, it is a journey. You are going to have your ups. You are going to have your downs, okay? It is a journey, right? But the struggles make you stronger, all right? I look around the room, and there's some people, things are going great for you right now, and that's awesome. But there's other people in this room, things are not going great at all, okay? There's broken relationships. There's people that need healing in their bodies. But I want to tell you, there will, at any given time, there's some of us that are up, and there's some of us that are down. Life is a journey. Life is a journey. Have patience. This is my word to you for this year. Have patience. Let God's work. Let his, 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 his spirit fill you and perfect you with 
patience this year to realize that he is molding you and shaping you into who he wants you to be, all right? So let's realize it's a journey. Let's, let's realize that we have to have patience through it all. Let's realize that God has a plan. Do we have a plan? Do you have a plan? If we fail to plan, we plan to fail. you got to have a plan for this year. And I want to pray with you right now that God would begin to birth that plan in your heart. I want to ask that God would give you a vision for this year of where he wants you to be. And I'm going to pray that in those moments when you see anything standing in your way, that you will tell it to eat your dust, that you will put it in your past and you will focus on your future. Will you stand up with me today? I just want to pray a prayer over you. How many of you guys, no matter what your situation is right now, you just want to believe really big for God to just pour, his self, pour himself out in your life this year and just bless 2018? Can we agree on that this morning? Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you so much, God. I pray for every individual in this room, God, we agree together that you would just give us a vision, God, that you would help us to realize through this next year, God, that it's a journey. You have a journey that is awaiting us. There's struggles that are coming, Father God. There's, there's mountaintops that are coming. There's good times. There's bad. But Father, through it all, I pray that you would be glorified in our lives. I pray, God, that we would uh, speak to the mountains that are before us and command them to be lifted and cast aside. I pray that we would speak, God, to the demons in front of us and we would command them to get behind us. I pray, God, that we would put our focus on the future that you have for us. And God, as your servants, we wouldn't let you down. God, but we would push forward, that we would press on, that we would keep our eyes on the prize. God, let us be contagious Christians. Let us know you and make you known this year. Thank you, Father. With your eyes still closed and your heads bowed, I want to just tell you that God truly has a purpose for your life. From the moment you were conceived in your mother's womb, he had a plan laid out for you. You may realize that and you may not. And I want to tell you that the first step to beginning to understand why you were on this earth is beginning to have a real relationship with Jesus. Not religion, not just coming to church, but a real relationship. One where you talk to Jesus, he talks to you, and he begins to change your life for the better. And you begin to align your life with his plan and his purpose. Today, I want to give you that opportunity. What better day than the last day of the year as you come into this new year, 2018, to say, God, my focus is going to be on a relationship with you this year. I've done everything else in my life. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus upon you and I'm going to grow in my relationship. I want to put you as the Lord of my life. If that's you today and you want to make that happen, I'm going to ask you in just a moment, as I count to three, I'm just going to ask you to raise your hand. No one else is looking around, just your pastors, because we want to know who you are. We want to pray over you. And as we roll into this new year, we can't wait to see what God is going to do in your life. Together, as a church, we will pray with you and we will invite Jesus to be the Lord of your life. So if that's you, on the count of three, will you just raise your hand today? One, two, three. Amen. I want a relationship with Jesus. I want him to be my focus in 2018. Amen, amen. Church, will you pray together with me? Say, Father God, I love you. Father God, I love you. I believe that you sent Jesus Christ. I believe that you sent Jesus Christ. To give his life. To give his life. So that I could have life. So I could have life. Jesus, I ask. Jesus, I ask. That you would come into my heart. That you would come into my heart. That you would forgive me of my sins. That you would forgive me of my sins. That you would give me a brand new life. That you would give me a brand new life. Make me contagious. Make me contagious. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Will you give a hand to those that just made that decision? Hey, thanks for joining us today. We sincerely hope the message impacted your life. Stay connected with us by following us online, or you can find us on Facebook. If you would like to partner with us financially, we have a few easy ways to give. You can text your giving to 77977 and simply type in MMC and follow the prompts. Or you could find us online at www.mountainmoverschurch.org and click the Give Now tab. Or you could simply mail your giving in to 24000 South 660 Road, Grove, Oklahoma, 74344. 
We are a church leading people into a real and life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ that is contagious. We look forward to seeing you next week.